Hey, I'm Garrett Hoffman, and I want to show you my process for creating a rubber stamp using 3D printing. I've been trying to make these planters, and part of my original design was this ML logo, and I wanted to change this up into a new design. In order to do that, I need to change my previous stamp into the new logo design. So I'm going to walk you through that process. First, we're just going to start with a simple circle and then extrude that out, creating a circular area for our logo design to sit in. Now, I'm not going to go into too much specifics on the Fusion 360 side of this because there are a lot of different CAD software they can use. The general idea is the same, though. Create a shape, bring in an SVG, and then extrude that SVG into the design. I'm doing a slightly different makeup here where I'm also creating a top for it. That way when we're done with the silicon mold, we can epoxy the silicon mold into the top of it. Then we just simply have to send this through to the slicer. All right, so we have our 3D printed molds now. One with a key and one without. The one with has also been ironed with the 3D printer. The one without is just a regular standard PLA print. So now, time to do some science. Okay, just barely. We're just gonna use some Let's Resin Silicon A and B, and we just simply mix them 50-50 together. Now to figure out how much silicon we need to put in, there's two different ways. One, we can just kind of eyeball it you'll end up with a little bit of extra waste, but generally not that big of a deal. Another interesting way to do it is to fill your mold up with water. Then when you've got it filled up, you can put that into a measuring cup and then just divide by two and you know how many equal parts of A and B you need to put in. The only downside with that approach is that you do need to hand dry the mold or just wait for it to like air dry. Otherwise, any water trapped in there will show up in the result. All right, let's get mixing. For mine, I'm just gonna eyeball this, get a rough amount. Now you can just hand stir this with your typical stirring stick. Uh, I typically like to use my uh, drill attachment that I designed, which you can find on the website, link is below. This just simply makes it easy to mix. This is technically a bubble-free mix, so we can just pour directly in. However, especially using the drill, I like to put this in the vacuum chamber so that then it can release any of the bubbles and kind of degas the whole thing. So let's do that. Now all we're gonna do is try to get a very thin strip of silicon into the mesh, into the deepest parts of the mesh of the mold first. That will help prevent any air bubbles from getting trapped. All right, so here we are six hours later and the silicon has cured. So I'm gonna start with first is just taking a X-Acto knife and just cleaning up the edge here a little bit. To remove these, uh, you may be able to just pull them out, just being very gentle. I generally like to take a pair of tweezers, although anything small and thin like a safety pin or a flathead screwdriver will work. And I will just take that and I will stick it in the edge and just run that along the outside. Just until I've got something easy enough to grab a hold of. Okay. 
So now that we have our two separate molds, it's time to attach them to the tops. To do that, we're simply going to use a quick epoxy. I'm gonna be using this Devcon Home epoxy. It's a five minute epoxy, so it's quick and easy. To do that, it's just a A and B again, so equal parts. So we'll start with one. And then we simply mix, stir it together. And this has to be done relatively quick because it is a five minute epoxy. So we have five minutes to put this on. Now putting this on is just as simple as just slapping some on. So this is where the support structure leftovers, the markings will actually be of benefit to us because that will help give the epoxy something to grip onto as it hardens and just make it just a little bit more snug in there. Once that's laid on there, then it's as simple as just laying it on. Anything to note when you are beginning to put this on, you do wanna try and line up your design with how you're going to be stamping it. So that is a little bit harder to do with these circular ones. With the other one, this one has more of a key so that then we know exactly where this should line up. It should fit nice and snug in there. And now if you look closely, you'll see that the stamp itself is slightly raised from the top of the, from the ridge. Now we'll sit and let that dry for five minutes while it hardens. All right, it's been about five minutes now. If you still have the cup left over, a good way to test if your epoxy has finished curing is to test your leftover. And so as you can see, this is clearly good and hardened. So now over here, uh, we can see our rubber stamp is in here. Uh, so now we can use the top and our mold itself as the container. So this will fit together nice and snug and then clamp together and we are good to go. We're going to use some stamping ink. So you can get these pretty cheap, often just online. And so they're just simple stamping pads, nothing too fancy with them. So we'll start with our first one, the simple circular one. And so it's just as simple as patting it down to like a normal stamp. Uh, you'll likely want to press it in a few times just to get it nice and covered for the first time. And now you can see it adhered in here. Sometimes you can see a little bit of light like this on the bottom, so you just you kind of squeeze it around a little bit more. And then place it down. And so this is part of uh, what we were talking about with aligning it. So it should be pretty well aligned with the handle itself. And press down. And there we go. We have our stamp. And we can go ahead and give the other one a try as well. This one should be perfectly aligned because of the key. And there we go. Two perfect stamps. All right, well that's the process for creating a rubber stamp using 3D printing. I'd love to have you join the MakerLoop Discord. There's a link in the description. And until next time.